Hey, so Jackson here again. So today we're going to be talking about the field of axioms. Now, the field of axioms are specific properties that apply to addition and multiplication, or at least that's today what uh, we're going to be talking about. Some of these properties you may have heard before in previous years of math, um, such as in Algebra 1. You may have heard of the distributive property or the reflexive property, but there's going to be a couple other um, properties that apply to specific operations, which the ones we're going to be dealing with are addition and multiplication. Now, there are 11 different axioms that apply to adding and multiplying real numbers, and these are what we call field, ax field axioms. The first one we're going to talk about is the closure axiom. Whoops, closure. Now, the definition of the closure axiom is that real numbers are closed under addition and under multiplication. So what that is saying that is if we have two real numbers, we're going to say x and y, x times y is going to give a unique real number just as x plus y is going to give a real unique number. Now, we can actually take the closure property even further by saying that a certain set is closed under a certain operation. For example, let's say we have the set, whoops, let's say we have the set 0, 1. So 0 and 1 are the numbers in our set. And we can say that 0 and 1, this set is closed under multiplication because you could multiply any combination of those two numbers and you're not going to get a number that's out of the set. For example, if you multiply 0 times 1, we're going to get 0. And if you multiply 1 times 0, you're also going to get 0. 0 times 0 is again going to get you 0. And 1 times 1 is going to get you 1. Now, all of these products are also in the set. So we're going to say it's, this set is close under multiplication. Now, we cannot say that it's close under addition because if you take 1 plus 1, which are both from the set, we're going to get 2. Now the sum, 2, is not in the set, so it is not closed under addition. Now, the next axiom we're going to be talking about is the commutativity property. Now first, the, the word commutativity comes from the word commute, which, me, which means to exchange. So now basically what um, the commutativity axiom states is that addition and multiplication of real numbers are commutative operations. That means that x plus y equals y plus x. And that is because, um, and that, so that we, the word commutativity comes from the fact that you can exchange x and y. Now, now the same can be set, said for the, for the commutative property of multiplication, which is that x plus y, or x times y is the same as y times x. And that's again, because you can exchange those two. Now it should be noted that the commutativity property does not apply to subtraction because five times five minus two does not equal does not equal two minus five. Nor does it apply to powers. For example, two to the third does not equal three squared. Now the next property we're going to be talking about is the associativity property. Now this comes from the word associate, which means, you know, to group together. Now basically what it's saying is that addition and multiplication of real numbers are associative operations. That means that if you have, let's say we have real numbers x, y, and z, x plus y in parentheses plus z is going to be equivalent to x plus parentheses y plus z. Now you could do this in any combination. Same with z plus x plus y is equal to y plus uh, y plus x in parentheses plus z. Now the associativity property also applies to multiplication. For example, if we again have three real numbers, x, y, and z, 
x times y in parentheses times z is equivalent to x times y times z. Now, it should again be noted that the associativity property does not apply to subtraction. For example, if we have the three real numbers 2, 3, and 4, 2 minus 3 in parentheses minus 4 is equal to negative 5, but 2 minus, whoops, 2 minus 3 minus 4, the negative sign is going to distribute in and you're going to get positive 3. Now these two are not equivalent to each other. Now the next property we're going to be talking about is the distributivity property. Now this you may remember from Algebra 1, but what the distributive, the distributive property says is that multiplication distributes over addition. Now that means if you have x times in parentheses y plus z, that is going to be equivalent to you, the x can distribute into y and then again to z. So you'll get xy plus xz. Now, um, the distributive pr property also says that parentheses in an, in an expression are dealt with first. For example, if you have 2 times 3 plus 4, you're going to, PEM, I don't know if you remember PEMDAS, but you do parentheses first. So that is going to be equal to 2 times 7. Whoops, that is a 7, which equals not a z, which equals 14. Now, if you were to use the distributive property, this would also be equal to 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4, which equals 6 plus 8, which again equals 14. Now it should also be noted that the multiplication does not distribute over multiplication. For example, 2 times 3 times 4 is not equivalent to 2 times 3 times 2 times 4. Now the next axiom that we're going to talk about is the identity elements. And this says that for real numbers, there is a unique element for addition that when added to another real number, you will get the same number. So for, so for addition, this is 0. So what that is saying is that x plus 0 equals x. Pretty intuitive. Now this also applies to multiplication, except the identity element for multiplication is 1. And that saying is, you know, x times 1 is going to also get you x. Again, very intuitive. Now the reason these are called identity elements is that when using this property, the identical n number will come out. For example, 5 plus 0 is going to get you 5, the identical number to which started, as well as 5 times 1 will equal 5. So the last property you're going to talk about is the inverses axiom. Now this says that any real number is going to have a unique additive inverse as well as a unique multiplica multiplicative inverse. For example, if we and the inverse will undo itself. So for example, if we have x and we add its inverse, which is negative x, we're going to get 0. Similarly, if you have x and we multiply it times its multiplicative inverse, 1 over x, we're going to get 1. You can see that because the x's will cancel. And just to give a couple real number examples, if we have 5 and we add its additive inverse, negative 5, that is going to equal 0. Whereas if we have 5 and we multiply it times 1 over 5, its multiplicative inverse, we'll get 1. Going a little bit further, we're going to talk about why 0 has no multiplicative inverse. 
For example, if we let's remember that the multiplicative inverse of x is going to be 1 over x, and that will be getting us 1. But if we have 0, we cannot multiply it by 1 over 0 because that is undefined. So there is no multiplicative inverse for 0. So now we're going to do a little bit more practice with axioms by figuring out for each of these expressions which axiom is justifying it. So for the first one, we have x plus y plus z. Now the parentheses are exchanging places here. So for, these to, for this to be true, this would be proving the commutativity property of addition. Now you have to say of, of addition because this also applies to subtraction. So we're going to write commutative prop of addition. I'm just going to abbreviate it like that. Now for this next one, they've given us x times y plus z is equal to xy plus xz. Now here, remember the x has been distributed over multiplication, over addition. So we have the x is being multiplied by the y, then the x is being multiplied by the z. So this is going to be the distributive property. Abbreviate distrib prop. Now this final example kind of a curveball that I threw at you, and that is in that x times y plus z times 1 over xy plus xz is equal to 1. Now there are two properties being um, used here. Now you first have to remember that to get this denominator, they distributed in the x, so x times y times x plus z, and then they took that product and multiplied it by its multiplicative inverse, which uh, obtained the result 1. So that concludes our lesson on the field axioms. Now, of course, you, uh, if you do not remember all these properties, you can go to page 4 in your textbook um, to where they have all the properties listed. And I hope this helped, and good luck.